What do you have to sacrifice to save $300 and a little change when comparing the Canon 600RTs versus the Yongnuo 600RTs? Christine and I shoot a lot of weddings and have a handful of the Canon 600 RTs that we use mostly at receptions. RT stands for radio transmission, so that's wireless without the flash needing to fire to trigger the other flashes. It provides complete remote control of multiple off-camera flashes, and we have found these flashes to be extremely reliable at multiple years of use. The only real drawback to using these Canon 600 RTs is the price. They sell for $4.99 each, and having a few is quite expensive. So when Yongnuo released the Yongnuo 600 RT, a clone of the Canon 600 at a quarter of the price, I was curious about the possible sacrifices one would have to make to save so much. I've now shot three weddings using the Yongnuo and can say that its performance is identical. In fact, recycle time seems a tiny bit faster and the autofocus assist beam is better, seriously bright, and in my testing seems to do a better job of helping the camera focus in low light. So why would anybody buy the more expensive Canon 600 RT? Well, let's talk about build quality first. When I took the Yongnuo out of the box, the little rubber gasket around the hot shoe fell off. And I think that's representative of the build quality. Oh, although honestly, overall, it doesn't feel that much different, but the Canon has a nicer feel to the plastic and the buttons and text look a little bit more professional with the center select set button that doesn't rotate. I've got an older Yongnuo flash with a battery door that feels extremely flimsy and while it hasn't broken yet, I think it will at any moment. I'm happy to say that with the Canon, or sorry, with the Yongnuo 600 RT, that battery door feels just as firm and solid as the Canon. So overall minor differences. On the feature side of things, there are a few items that the Yongnuo is lacking. That's a locking button for rotation and swivel, a sensor for gels, but on the other hand, the Yongnuo offers firmware upgrades via USB, a nice touch when we want to ensure future compatibility, and you get a battery level indicator. Both of those are absent from the Canon 600s. With just three weddings of use, I can't personally speak to the long-term reliability of these flashes, but my research leads me to believe that the results are somewhat mixed, and this is where I believe the majority of your sacrifice lies. These Canon 600 RTs have held up very well for two solid years of shooting. A few falls, though nothing too serious, and they continue to work well. And I've also got the peace of mind that if something does happen, I can send them into Canon, they'll be repaired, and be back in working condition quickly. The Young Nuos, on the other hand, if they fail or break, it's going to be a much larger hassle to get repaired, and to get back in a timely manner. It may be a bit of a hassle to deal with the company. Now, to be fair, I have friends in the wedding industry that are very happy with their young newos and have been using them for much longer than I have and have nothing but positive things to say. The saying, your mileage may vary, applies well here and is certainly something to consider when comparing versus Canon. If you already own Canon flashes, the 600s, these Yongnuos work seamlessly with the system and offer a much cheaper way to increase the number of flashes in your kit. In this example, I have a Canon 600 RT sitting on a light stand behind my subject, and via the flash menu on the camera, I can switch it to manual and dial the exposure way down to add just a little bit of rim light. I do recommend the Yongnuo 600 RTs as long as you have a backup, which with the savings is still cheaper than buying one Canon RT. Keep the potential sacrifices in mind though, it might not work well for your type of shooting. And whenever I review flashes, I like to give one quick tip for better flash photography when shooting indoors with just a flash. On the camera, turn it to 45 degrees reverse, it's usually over one of your shoulders, and up about 45 to 60 degrees to bounce the flash. This gives you a much nicer look on your subject and avoids that flashed look. All right, so switching gears from flash light source to a constant light source, I wanna talk about the E300RS 10-inch bicolor LED dimmable light. 
that I've been using to film this video. This was sent to me from led-video-lights.com. They've got a large selection of LED light panels at seemingly affordable prices. I say seemingly because again, when dealing with a smaller brand or store, you take some risks in purchase and later support or lack thereof that I can't speak to, but I can say I'm really happy with this light. It's dimmable and offers a temperature adjustment between 3200K and 5600K. The LCD display shows the color temperature, brightness, and battery level. You can power it with batteries or the included AC adapter. It all arrived in this little carrying case that feels extremely cheap, and the battery charger feels quite cheap too. But the light itself is really nice with a metal frame, adjustable angled bracket sitting on a quarter inch mounting point ready for a light stand. Brightness is impressive and the LED readout is helpful. This model is heavy enough that you won't be mounting it on your camera, but it's still quite portable and used with a small Manfrotto light stand gives you great flexibility on a shoot. Christina has now used it on a couple of shoots as rim light and fill light and been very happy with the quality of the light and the easy setup. For just over 200, this seems to be an excellent value. Why use an LED instead of a flash for photography? Having a constant source of light can be helpful in setup and speed. You know the look you're going to get before you even take the photo. It doesn't work well if you need to light a large room or are trying to overpower the sun. The output from a flash in these cases is going to provide much more light. And if you consider lighting sources for video, most flashes are useless, and this provides an affordable option, including the ability to use AC power for longer shoots. Take some time to look at ledvideolights.com. There's a link to that right down below. They have a huge selection of offerings. Some include more portable options of this circular light, including ones that will fit on the hot shoe of your camera and bigger kits as well. If you appreciated this review, take a moment to press the thumbs up button. If you wanna be notified of future reviews, tips, tricks, and how to's, press the subscribe button. And if you are watching this video before August 10th, you've got a chance to win an awesome photography workshop in Yosemite National Park with McKay Photography Academy and additional prizes totaling more than $2,000. All of the details are at photorec.tv giveaway. You can click this link right here. Thanks so much for watching.